welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. In today's podcast, we're going to dive into fashion, or should I say style. Each one of us has a signature style, whether we know what it is or not. There is a sense about what we are most comfortable with, but also what makes our body look its best. And when we understand those two things, we can then create a signature style that is uniquely is unique to us, but also, again, makes us feel our best. So today's podcast is all about those 10 essential wardrobe items that I feel and have discovered um, every woman should have. And they're pretty basic, but at the same time, I'll give you specifics as we go throughout um, uh, that I think will be helpful. Everyone's going to choose different colors, different cuts, different styles um, based on what's going to make you and your figure and your comfort level um, be at its best. Okay, so today we're going to start with those 10 essentials. And you may be wondering, how can every single woman adhere to these 10 and then at the same time have their own original signature style? Well, what it comes down to is that when we create a capsule wardrobe, which I'll talk about in later posts, but also go into detail on the blog already, and I'll have links to those posts on the show notes. When we have these 10 essential items, Each season, we bring in seasonal items, but those essential 10 essential items remain the same. Why? They are basically the glue that holds those seasonal items together. They are those pieces that make everything work. They're of high quality, and I'm going to really encourage you to purchase high quality, so you may not be able to get all 10 of these right at once. It's going to take time, but these are items that will last, and they mix and match well with all sorts of different combinations of tops and bottoms and, and whatnot in your closet. So that's the key. These are items that you will use year-round, and then you will add your seasonal items um, that create your seasonal capsule wardrobes either in spring or in fall. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the first one being quality jeans. Now, these are jeans that you would wear on a casual Friday. These are jeans that you would wear in the evening, going out for fun. These are jeans that you would wear on the weekends and relax in. But these are also items that still always look good on you. Every woman, every woman has to have a fantastic pair of jeans. And then you start building, you add a few more. I think I have, I don't know, I'm not going to count how many jeans I have. But I definitely will edit out those ones that make me look my best or feel my best. And these are items that you're going to want to invest in. I always go to the to the mathematical, fashion mathematical equation of cost per wear. Yes, the jeans that are going to last may cost between $1 and $200. But they will last you. 10 years, maybe 20 years. Some people have said they've had certain jeans for a lifetime. If they're made well and you care for them properly, they really can last a long time. And when it comes down to cost per wear, say you have a hundred dollar pair of jeans and you wear it 10 times. Now that's a low end. Most people obviously wear their jeans a lot more than that. That's a $10 pair of jeans. Now, someone would say, wait a second, you're still forking out $100. Yes, you are. But that pair of jeans, those pair of jeans are going to be with you a lot longer and look good each time rather than if you did pay for a $10 or $20 uh, pair of jeans that looked good the first few times and then started to wear out. And then you're going to have to go back and buy another pair of jeans and another pair of jeans. And by the time you've worn or spent $100 um, on one pair of jeans, you are, you have already spent close to $100 trying to keep those pair of jeans from the cheaper end to look their best. So in the long run, it really is, yes, it's an investment in the front end, but in the long run, it really does make a difference to your pocketbook and your time. I mean, your time is valuable, so invest. Then you don't have to go back to the shop all the time. All right, so 
quality jeans. A few, um, now I'm long, I have long legs. I'm 5'11". I have inseams that are 34 to 36. Um, the good part about jeans nowadays is you can pretty much get them in any length you want. And if they aren't exactly in the length that you want, this is where you go to your tailor and always want to have, try to have a tailor that you trust that you can go to. That's not through the roof expensive. Um, and that is, you want a pair of jeans that's, um, for heels. And then you want a pair of jeans you can wear with flats that hit right at the right length. I always make sure I have at least two pairs of jeans in my closet for flats and heels. And then you might want to add a pair of cropped or ankle jeans for summer or spring as well. And then let's talk about color real quick. Color. Always start with dark denim. That's going to be their first pair to keep in your closet. Why? Dark denim is more formal, number one. Number two, it's more slimming because it is a darker color. It creates a, a lengthening silhouette. And while it may fade out, the way to prevent that from happening if you wash it um, is to flip your jeans inside out every time you wash them, and that will help maintain the color. So use dark denim. And then if you want different colors, black, white, and whatnot, go for it depending on your, color, your coloring, your preference, your style. But I would always make sure you have at least one pair of dark denim jeans in your closet. All right, so that's number one in our 10 essential wardrobe um, closet. Second one is a trench coat. Everyone should have a trench coat, whether you live in London <laughs> or you live in sunny California. Now, the length of trench, the style of trench, the color of trench, again, is going to depend on your signature style. I would love to have a Burberry trench, and maybe someday I will, but I don't have one now. However, I do have one that's classic khaki, and it's been with me for, I think, now four years. I've had it, uh, I've had it the seams fixed a few times because I've ripped one out or two and it still looks perfect. So it's of good quality. The seams was not the coat's problem. It was my problem. It's lined and it's, it's just a classic coat that I think you should have in your closet. Now, again, everything's going to depend on your personality, your, uh, geographic location and your coloring. So think about the length too. I like to have a short trench for casual wear. Like if I want to wear it with jeans, um, just on a, with a simple top or blouse, you can also wear it with long, a long trench with this outfit, but the shorter the length, the more casual you can wear with it, the longer or to knee length, um, and maybe just a little bit below for some people, um, that can be used for more formal occasions or when you're wearing a dress. And I love wearing a dress with a trench and my heels or boots. That's just a fantastic look. And it's so simple, so simple. Trench looks good with just about about everything. And it's definitely worth saving up for. But the other the other places you can get trenches besides Burberry are everywhere. I mean, everyone pretty much makes a trench, but um, J. Crew is where I got mine. And they always seem to have one. It's a little bit of an investment, but nothing compared to Burberry. And as I said, it's with, been with me for four years and counting. I usually have it dry cleaned once a year just to spruce it up. All right. So trench coat number two. Oh, and colors. Wow, there are so many different colors and prints. I always love watching Burberry's runway show simply because they always come up with all sorts of fantastic ways to wear a trench in the different styles. Um, and since it is a trench cut, that's a classic cut, so you can have some more fun with a different color or a different print, depending on what you're comfortable with. And have fun with it because they're just flattering. The, the, the collar, um, the buttons, the long sleeves, and the belted waist that gives your body some shape. They're just a classic cut, so you really can have some fun with the prints or the different colors. So that's number two. Number three, cashmere sweaters. All right, and I mean cashmere sweaters for winter or for summer. You may be thinking, what, a sweater in summer? Well, it depends on where you live, granted, but in the evenings. But this is when you switch to a lightweight cashmere. At least a two-ply cashmere, which means that it's of good quality still, but it will be thinner. And then for winter, you're going to want at least four to six-ply. Now make this a little bit thicker. Always check the quality and make sure that the, the wool bounces back from your touch and that it also drapes the way you would prefer. Some of my favorite come from France's um, Eric Pompard's uh, cashmere collection. Now it is a French company, so I usually have to size up, but they really, I have two or three of them and I've never been disappointed with the quality. Some people get very frustrated because they are smaller than you expect, but as long as you know you have to, as an American, I have to order a size larger than I would in American stores. I've always been very happy with the quality. And the other part of having a cashmere sweater, having a cashmere sweater collection, 
is that you want to obviously take proper care of them, but make sure you never iron them with an actual iron. I always prefer to use a steam garment cleaner or excuse me, a steam, a steamer, a garment steamer. This prevents that piling that always seems to happen with cheaper uh, cashmere, but it can happen with a good cashmere. It's just a matter of how you take care of it. So that's one investment I would definitely recommend. And I'll I'll offer um, or share a link on my show notes to the one I use um, and have been very, very happy with. And it heats up quickly. You're in and out with your ironing in like five minutes, and then you're ready to go to work or wherever you're heading that day. So number three is a cashmere sweater. Number four, now this is going to depend on your preference, but you want to at least have dress pants or skirts in your closets, our closet. We only have one. Um, If we're lucky, we have more, but then that's with more stress too. So let's keep it to one closet. Anyways, dress pants and skirts. Now skirts are obviously going to be dependent on what you're comfortable with and also with what kind of shoe you like to wear. For example, pencil skirts are a fantastic choice and any figure really can shine in a pencil skirt. But if you wear a pencil skirt, the ones that go right to right above your knee or right at your knee or below your knee, you got to wear heels with it. It just, it just makes pencil skirts are meant to elongate, but if you stop them with a, with a flat, it just doesn't complete the look the way it's supposed to. Again, my opinion, I'm very particular. You can do whatever you want if that's your style. But the pencil skirts one, A-line skirts, um, there's midi length skirts, which go between the knee and the ankle. So mid calf, those are becoming really popular recently. And they're beautiful on when they're proportioned with the proper top. Um, Those are good ideas. If you're not a skirt person, choose dress pants. And as you know, there's fantastic dress pants out there at very reasonable prices. Banana Republic and J. Crew offer some great cuts and styles and all sorts of designs and colors. Um, make sure that you use, you choose the length that hits you appropriately. Um, if you're wearing flats or heels and you can use obviously wear either footwear with those. And I love cropped or ankle pants for the spring or early fall when I'm at work. And I would definitely recommend that you choose a length that doesn't stop in the middle of your thigh or your uh, calf because it, it cuts you off and it doesn't help lo- elongate. Choose a length that hits close to your ankle or just above your ankle. And if you can, wear heels that elongates you even more, but they look fantastic with flats as well because it's very Parisian and very classic Audrey Hepburn and they're comfortable too. So dress pants and skirts are item number four in your 10 essential wardrobe items. All right, five. Now five, it depends again on your preference of style and how casual um, or professional you want to look. So this is where I put leather jackets and or blazers. Now I'm a fan of having a leather jacket handy to wear as a more casual coat, but also to wear as a layering element in an outfit. Now I want to clarify really quickly um, because coats, outerwear, and layering pieces like camisoles are not included in my 10 essential wardrobe item. Those are definitely something you're going to obviously have in your wardrobe, but those aren't the 10 wardrobe essentials. So don't worry. Those are part of finishing your wardrobe, but they are not part of your 10 essentials. And that's why I'm going to include the leather jacket in here because sometimes people wear it as an actual part of their outfit, their layering. Now, if you don't want a leather outfit, you want to go more professional, more um, classic. This is where the blazer comes in whether it's a suit that's tied in with your bottoms or it's simply that simple uh, beige or black blazer you wear to work over a beautiful uh, camisole with a skirt or pants. I love having at least a black one and then one of a neutral tan color as well so I can kind of, depending on the weather, depending on how cold or warm it is outside, I can just pop that on, I have a coat, and I I know I still look all right. So that's item number five on our 10 essential wardrobe items. Now, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll see you on the other side after this one-minute intermission.
Okay, so welcome back. We just talked about the first five of the 10 essential items every woman should have in their closet. And those were, just to quickly review, number one, quality jeans. Two, a classic trench coat or classic based on what you would prefer. (laughs) Three, cashmere sweaters. Four, dress pants or skirts or and skirts. Five, leather jackets or a blazer or blazers. All right, so those are the first five we've already gone over. Now let's talk about the remaining five. And some great ones we still have to get to. All right, number six of our uh, essential items is a white button-up shirt. Now this is the collar, a white, a white shirt with a collar, button-up. Um, the sleeve length is completely up to you based on your comfort level. The tailoring and length of the shirt is absolutely up to you. And I always just start with a white basic shirt there's obviously going to be some people that white does not work for them. It's just a, an accident waiting to happen. It's a magnet for stains, and I get that. But at least look for or have in your closet a neutral button-up shirt that has a collar because it really is a great layering piece. And quite honestly, I love having this option in my closet because if I'm in a pinch or if I just feel like being completely casual, it's the easiest outfit to pull together. Put on a pair of dark denim jeans, white button-up shirt, my ballet flats, and my trench, and I am out the door. Add a statement necklace or bracelet or a cuff or earrings, and you've dressed it up, and it's perfectly fine to go out. You're going to look fantastic. It's a classic, simply luxurious look that never gets tiring to look at. All right, so white button-up shirt is number six. Now, where do you get them? So a great place that I've found that offers quality tops at really reasonable prices is Foxcroft, and they have these button-up shirts in any color and print you could imagine. And there's some that have stretch, there's some that are wrinkle-free, and the length of the arm, short sleeve, three-quarter sleeve, various uh, tailorings. Now, if you wanna wear a shirt out, not tucked in, go for it. Just make sure it's a tailored shirt, and what I mean by that, it's not gonna be skin tight or anything, but at least give a silhouette to your um, to your top half and it's something important because you don't want to look like a box you want to make sure that your top half does have some silhouette of, of giving you some shape and it has to obviously be comfortable I do love those shirts that have a little bit of stretch another brand if you want a silk blouse or a silk button-up is equipment they always have a classic white button-up shirt that is a great option for a more professional setting or for layering so it's not so thick um, and easy to wear a sweater over or things like that all right and i'll have a few other links as well on the blog on the show notes all right so that's number six let's move on to number seven speaking of tops so that's your white button-up number six number seven though is i always think a woman should have at least two to three blouses in her closet Now, these are going to be, again, blouses that can be worn year-round. That will be great, very versatile, functional for a variety of outfits, paired with jeans, skirts, pants, um, you name it. Um, I prefer silk blouses. The reason I prefer silk blouses is because silk can be worn in winter because it keeps the heat in, and it's perfect in summer, as we all know, because it's so breezy. It just flows with whatever you're wearing and allows the air to breathe, your body to breathe. It's It's just like cotton, natural fiber. So the better, it's better to have natural fiber against your body for those purposes. But I mean, obviously other blouses, there's fantastic, beautiful blouses out there and all sorts of different combinations of of fabrics and textures. But those are my preferences. Now you can get a silk blouse just about anywhere. It depends on, again, the length of sleeve you want, the color, the neckline, how much you can afford as an investment. But do take care of these silk blouses and do consider the quality of silk because not all silk is the same. And I'll again go over some more detail of that in the blog post um, of my show notes, some options for links to different uh, past blog posts. All right, moving on to number eight. Number eight is a nautical top. Now, some people do not include a nautical top in their top essential uh, wardrobe items. To me, I'd put it as number one. I am stripes obsessed, but I had to temper myself and I have kept it at number eight. Doesn't mean it's not as important. It's just, I realize not everyone loves stripes as much as I do. Anyway, nautical top, sometimes called a Breton top or a Marinier top, but just think navy white stripes. Now, do you want navy and white stripes? You may not want navy and white stripes, but basically a striped top, black and white, ivory and blue, ivory and navy, 
red and white. It really depends on, again, your coloring, what is going to flatter your skin tone and what you, what your signature style is. Now, some great places to get striped tops. Okay. I have a bunch of tops from Chance Company, which is, was created by Julia Leach. And she offers fantastic different, uh, tops of different colors, the classics, the little bit more, um, modern contemporary, uh, fabrics, thin, thick. It really depends on what you want. She offers that classic boat neck line as well. Bowden also offers a lot of different colors and stripe options. Another one, if you are a Kate Middleton fan or a Duchess of Cambridge, excuse me, fan, you may remember last spring when she was in Australia, she was, um, seen wearing a classic Breton top from me and M. Now that it's a little bit more expensive, but it's simple. It's classic. It's a beautiful cut. And I will offer show li- or, uh, links to that on the show notes. So they really are. Every company really makes them because they are a classic color or style. This is a neutral top in my mind. You wear them with jeans. If you re- get a button up striped top, I just recently saw one from Elizabeth, Mar- Elizabeth, excuse me, Isabel Morant. Pair that with a beautiful pencil skirt or skirt, and it's just lovely. I mean, you just can't go wrong. It's much. It's very similar to having black or white in your wardrobe. It's a neutral print. Okay, so neutral or a nautical top is number eight. Number nine is the ever so aptly mentioned black dress. But I wouldn't. I think we should have all women should have a versatile black dress. And I get rid of the adjective little because I think sometimes it's misunderstood as to what we mean by little. Little, anyway, I won't go off on a tangent on that, but definitely get a black dress that is versatile, not just for evening occasions, but for work occasions. This could be a black sheath dress, which is creates a silhouette on you, is not a body conscious or it's not tight silhouette, but it flows with the with your body form and it gives you a slight waist um, as well. I love you wearing those with a jacket, adding a belt, could be worn with flats or heels, even boots and tights in the winter. It's up to you. Or you might want a wrap dress that's black. It really depends. And I always just keep my eyes open for black dresses because they're everywhere and you never know, you know, where you're going to find the best one for your body type. So just keep your eyes open for them. They don't have to cost a fortune, but they can. It just depends on, again, what you want to invest and what you prefer to wear. But you always need to have one. It doesn't hurt to have a few more um, for various occasions. So that's number nine. The little black, excuse me, the versatile black dress. Gotta catch myself there. The last one is one of my favorites for all sorts of occasions, and it's the wrap dress. Now, as you guys know, Diane von Furstenberg um, brought this dress into fashion in the 70s and then reincarnated it, per se, um, in, uh, in the most recent decades. But if you are a fan of V-necks and you love dresses, the wrap dress is your friend. The wrap dress really looks good on any body. That's the beauty of it because you get to wear or tailor it or cinch it in to your size. And I, I, that's, that's a fun part. Now her wrap dress is typically you want to wear one size larger. That's been my experience and what she actually recommends on her, um, online store. But what I love also about wrap dresses is that there's different colors, different prints, different lengths. You can get a maxi dress in a wrap dress and you can wear a camisole underneath it if you aren't a fan of of those v-necks. But the v-neck, keep in mind, the v-neck, and obviously it's going to depend on your body, is a way to elongate your body. And the whole one of the main goals when we dress is to create a a, a slimming silhouette. We're trying to streamline and that's what a V neck does. So keep that in mind. Although I know not everyone's a fan, um, but that's just something to consider. If it's not something that you like, then toss number 10 out and just stick with nine and get yourself another dress, a print dress, a classic neutral, maybe a leopard dress with a, with a sheath or maybe wear it, get another, um, excuse me, a shift a shift will be a looser dress than a sheath, but still knee length. But um, sheath dresses are fantastic dresses to have in your closet if you don't want to have a wrap dress. All right. So that was the 10th and final wardrobe essential for every woman's closet. I'm really anxious to hear or curious to hear what you think, um, if you want to share comments. Um, but that's definitely what I have discovered works best for just about 
any wardrobe, any career, any lifestyle um, that you live. And again, the fun part is tailoring it. But as a person who loves her lists, I'll create this list and I'll just keep checking it off and replace as necessary. It takes time to build this, but it's definitely doable and you'll be glad you did. Every morning you open your closet and be like, ooh, I have so many options I can mix and match. And it makes it that much more fun and easier on your budget once you get to that point because you're not replacing things as often. Now, all the links and various brands that I spoke about in the podcast, I will include on the show notes. So be sure to check that out on the blog, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast three. I'll have all those links and more information. Also the book, the Sim- choosing the simply luxurious life, a modern woman's guide, which comes out January, 2015. I will go into in-depth detail on all the things I just talked about here. Plus so much more, how to take care of your clothes, the 10 essential shoes, the accessories that you you should include in your wardrobe and all those extra components that create your capsule wardrobe. So if you're trying to create that capsule wardrobe and make sure that your, F, your style is effortless and always makes you feel your best, that book is going to be a great resource for you if you're interested and more information will be available again on the show notes for that. Now stay tuned for this week's Petite Pleasure. Since we're talking about fashion in this week's podcast, I thought what better time than to share with you guys my tote or handbag of choice as I go about my daily routine as well. It also doubles as a travel tote that I've just recently discovered is perfect for everything I carry without getting in the way when I'm on those tight, close knit seats on an, an airplane. So well, I just want, and I, what, one, one good thing about this tote that I love is that in working with uh, my clients and my online styling clients, it's one of those totes that I recommend to most people based on what they prefer and they love. It comes in all different sizes and all different colors. And it's, it's a perennial option. This designer makes it every single season. So it's not one of those things you have to jump on or pounce on. Now, sometimes it gets uh, discounted, often not. I haven't seen it discounted drastically because it is so popular. So the bag of the tote of choice that I definitely would recommend is one by Rebecca Minkoff. It's her MAB or capital M, capital A, capital B tote. And she makes them in size large, medium, and small. How convenient. Um, I have her large tote and I've had it for about a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. And I got mine in cerulean blue, which is a tough color to find, but it still is made. But she offers them in all sorts of colors. Now, what I love about this particular bag is that there's not one big logo anywhere on the tote. I'm not a big logo fan. This is one of those totes that you're going to get good quality, but not everyone's going to need to know where you bought it from. But you know that it's fantastic. It works for your life and it's going to last. So the large tote, what I love about it as a teacher... I can fit all sorts of different files and papers in it, and it's large enough for also my wallet, my planner, my phone, um, and any other reading material I want to include. And then as it doubles as a travel tote is fabulous because, again, I can put in all those necessary items, and it's just the right size without being too large. It fits under my seat in front of me without a problem and still have a little bit of leg room. And it has a front pocket for my um, my earphones, my earbuds, or an extra tea bag, um, anything that I need to put in there. My iP- my Apple laptop also fits in the large tote easily with lots of room to give. So I love that. The medium size though is a fantastic day tote, which I've recommended to many of my clients and they've, they've loved. And the small tote is a fantastic crossover bag as well. She provides a crossover strap for that. And it's good for if you don't like big uh, big, larger handbags or one for evening in the evening. So I will provide links for all those might be something to save up for. It's not terribly expensive compared to other designer bags. It's very reasonably priced. And again, it will last you. Mine's in great condition and I would presume it would continue to be so for years to come. Thank you for tuning in to the simple, sophisticated podcast where intelligent living is paired with signature style. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and you have a few minutes, take a moment to rate this podcast on iTunes and leave a review as we're just getting started and all feedback is extremely helpful and very much appreciated. 
For more ideas and inspiration, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com or subscribe to the weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox every Friday to help you stay caught up on the most recent podcast, blog post, as well as offer an extra dose of inspiration exclusive to subscribers. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.